Progress is accelerating at an astonishing pace. B-18 is nearly complete as crews finish cutting the last sections, and its successor is already taking shape with the first pieces of B-19 now visible. The speed is difficult to believe. Another example of rapid advancement is China's successful Shenzhou-22 mission, launched to support and retrieve the Taikonauts aboard Tiongong. The operation went smoothly and the crew is safe. Meanwhile, NASA's Perseverance rover has detected meteorite fragments on the Martian surface, offering new clues about the planet's geological past. We'll dive into all of these developments in today's episode of Great SpaceX. It's only been a few days since B-18 experienced its unexpected pressure event and exploded, yet the pace of progress has not slowed for even a moment. If this had happened to almost any other organization, we'd likely be seeing long pauses, complicated investigations, and long stretches of visible inactivity. But this is SpaceX, and the response has been defined by speed, clarity, and an unwavering drive to move forward. Once the site was declared safe, crews wasted no time. On November 22nd, B-18 was cut cleanly into two major sections, which were the liquid oxygen section and the methane section. Shortly after that, the methane section was divided into three smaller parts. This decision seems to reflect the condition of the booster itself because the upper area that includes the hot staging ring and the grid fin structures remained relatively intact, while the lower sections showed clear signs of deformation caused by the event. In the most recent update, the remaining portion of B-18, which was the liquid oxygen section, was also cut apart. Unlike the methane section, this portion was divided into only two pieces. Once the forward half of the liquid oxygen tank was removed, the internal fuel transfer tube was revealed. However, to the surprise of many observers, SpaceX chose to cut the tube as well. This confirmed that the upgraded transfer tube, which many assumed would be salvaged and reused for B-19 or another future vehicle, will not be repurposed. Although several images of the torn liquid oxygen tank suggested that the tube was not severely damaged, it did appear to have a small puncture. Even a minor hole could become a risk for leakage under pressure, and that may have been enough reason for SpaceX to retire it entirely. With this, the full cutting and disposal process of B-18 is essentially complete. The sections that still contain useful data or components will likely be sent to the production site for detailed analysis before being scrapped. The parts that hold no value for testing or review will likely be discarded much sooner. Among all of these pieces, many viewers remain hopeful that the forward structure containing the hot staging ring and grid fins can be saved. If that entire assembly is proven undamaged, Damaged, it could potentially be reused on the next booster. It's unfortunate to say goodbye to the first true representative of the Starship Booster Version 3 family so quickly, especially because so many expectations were placed on it. However, that excitement now shifts naturally to the next vehicle in line, B-19. Right after the incident, SpaceX openly discussed B-19 and hinted that stacking would begin in December. That timeline may actually prove to be conservative. On the morning of the 25th, the first major section of B-19 arrived at at the mega bay, most likely the methane tank. The remaining parts, which include the liquid oxygen tank, the aft section, and eventually the fuel transfer tube will follow. Once those pieces are in place, the forward section will be installed and the full booster assembly will be complete. With the first components already arriving, production is clearly ahead of schedule. If SpaceX continues at its current pace and all major parts are delivered on time, B-19 could be fully assembled by early January. The remainder of the month would then be used for testing, fit checks, and installation work. Even with this impressive speed, it's reasonable to expect SpaceX to take extra time for verification after what happened with B-18. Their goal for Flight 12 is not only to fly, but to achieve a fully successful mission and build momentum for the next set of critical milestones. That level of precision requires patience, careful inspection, and a methodical approach. Early February remains the most realistic launch target, which aligns with SpaceX's decision to set the official window for the first quarter of 2026, rather than focusing specifically on January. The FCC license also restricts launches until January 23rd, and it's unlikely that SpaceX would rush to attempt a launch in the final days of the month. Now all eyes turn to SpaceX as they work toward a strong return. We can only wait and watch how powerfully they come back after this setback. Let's now move on to the central story of China's recent Taikonaut rescue mission, which has drawn significant global attention for both its urgency and its execution. The chain of events began with the issue affecting the Shenzhou-20 spacecraft. Due to damage to one of its windows, the Shenzhou-20 crew was no longer able to rely on their own vehicle for a safe return. As a result, they were forced to come home aboard the Shenzhou-21 spacecraft. 
This decision protected the Shenzhou 20 crew, but it created a new problem. The Shenzhou 21 Taikonauts were now the ones living in orbit without a functioning return craft, which placed them in a vulnerable position. Space is full of unpredictable risks, and every crewed mission depends on the absolute certainty that a functioning spacecraft is available if an emergency evacuation becomes necessary. China had no choice but to accelerate preparation for Shenzhou 22. After an intensive rush period, the spacecraft launched at 11.11 p.m. Eastern on November 20. 24th or 12.11 p.m. on the 25th in Beijing time. Riding atop a Long March 2FG rocket from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center, it began its uncrewed rescue mission. Because Shenzhou 22 was intended to serve as a fresh return vehicle for the three Taikonauts aboard Tiangong, it carried only cargo. With no seats occupied, the crew will have room for their trip back to Earth in roughly six months. The spacecraft delivered food, consumables, and equipment that may help repair the cracked window on Shenzhou 20. What truly captured global attention attention, however, was the mission's exceptionally fast arrival. Shenzhou 22 reached Tiangong at 2.50 a.m. Eastern on the 25th, or 3.50 p.m. Beijing time, completing its journey in just three and a half hours, an hour quicker than the expected timeline. With docking complete, the Taikonauts' 10 days of uncertainty finally ended. Several factors drove this rapid rendezvous. Tiangong orbits slightly lower than the International Space Station at about 390 to 400 kilometers, compared to the ISS's 400 to 420. The lower altitude reduces both travel time and fuel requirements requirements while allowing atmospheric drag to assist during approach. Even so, altitude alone does not explain the speed. China's orbital rendezvous techniques have become highly efficient. By comparison, Soyuz typically takes 6 hours to 2 days to reach the ISS. Crew Dragon missions take 6 to 24 hours. Most cargo vehicles need at least a day and Cygnus can take up to 3. Achieving a 3 and a half hour arrival reflects both China's precise orbital planning and the readiness of its launch infrastructure. That readiness is central to China's strategy. The country keeps rockets in a state of near-immediate availability, meaning the main challenge during an emergency is preparing a spacecraft rather than an entire launch system. The response to the Shenzhou-20 debris strike demonstrated this approach clearly. Only 20 days after the incident, China launched Shenzhou-22 successfully. The China Manned Space Agency later stated that the mission provided a successful example of the international aerospace field in efficiently responding to emergencies, highlighting the strength of China's backup system, which ensures that a replacement spacecraft is always ready when needed. However, rapid preparation brings its own risks. A spacecraft assembled under pressure may still hide issues, and the Taikonauts' inspection of Shenzhou-22 aboard Tiangong will be essential. If they find any flaws, early detection will allow China to respond quickly, because a compromised rescue vehicle would leave the crew without a backup. Despite the competitive landscape of space exploration, China's ability to respond effectively to a crewed mission emergency deserves recognition. A shared international rescue framework would make spaceflight safer for everyone, and continued investment in tracking debris and meteorite activity could help prevent incidents like the one that affected Shenzhou 20. With the Taikonauts now safe, attention turns to the next steps. They will continue assessing the damage to Shenzhou 20 before it undocks and returns to Earth for further analysis. This must occur before the launch of Shenzhou 23, expected around April of 2026. With the rescue effort completed, Complete, the crew can refocus on research and station operations, and while competition will continue, most would agree that every nation should compete from a place of full capability, not from an advantage gained during moments of difficulty. Now let's turn to our final piece, but very important, latest discovery from NASA's Perseverance rover, a mission that continues to uncover new clues about Mars' past. Since landing on February 18th of 2021, the rover has spent its time examining the planet's surface, revealing geological features, environmental shifts, and formations that may hint at ancient microbial life. Its newest findings adds another compelling piece to that story. The discovery centers on an unusual rock formation unlike anything nearby. Perseverance spotted a tall, sculpted structure rising above the flatter, broken terrain around it. NASA has named the object Vipaxla. Standing about 31 inches tall, or roughly 81 centimeters, it was founded in a bedrock region known as Vernadent. 
the rover's MassCam Z camera captured the first images on the 2nd of September. NASA then directed Perseverance to analyze the formation with its SuperCam instrument. The readings revealed unusually high levels of iron and nickel, a signature strongly associated with iron-nickel meteorites that originate in the cores of large asteroids. This composition suggests that Phipaxila did not form on Mars but arrived from elsewhere in the solar system. If confirmed, it would be the first meteorite identified by Perseverance since the mission began. This finding is far more significant than a simple oddity. Meteorites and asteroids are remnants of the early solar system, dating back about 4.5 billion years before planets and moons took shape. When pieces of these ancient bodies fall to a planet's surface, they preserve chemical clues that help scientists reconstruct how planetary environments changed over time. For Mars, such evidence may help explain how it evolved from a warmer, wetter world to the cold and arid planet we see today. This is not the first time a rover has discovered meteorites on Mars. Earlier missions made similar finds. Curiosity identified several iron-nickel meteorites in Gale Crater, including the one-meter-wide Lemonon meteorite in 2014 and the Cacao meteorite in 2023. Opportunity and Spirit also encountered iron-nickel meteorites during their traverses. Since Perseverance is exploring Jezero Crater, which is similar in age to Gale and marked by many small impact craters, it's likely that more fragments are scattered across the region. With time, the rover may uncover additional pieces that further clarify Mars's geological past. Meteorite hunting is not Perseverance's main goal. Its core mission is to search for evidence of ancient microbial life and to collect samples that may one day return to Earth. Those samples could reveal details about Mars's climate, its vanished water systems, and its potential to host life life billions of years ago. Still, every new discovery enriches our understanding of the planet. The work of Perseverance and the rovers before it shows how much remains concealed beneath Mars's dust and stone. They remind us that the red planet is not a barren world, but a landscape full of hidden stories. With continued exploration, someday even by human hands, our picture of Mars will only grow clearer. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.